Hello. <laughs> Hi, strangers. Hello, it's me, your friend, and is for nurse, aka Amy. <laughs> and I'm just so happy to be back on YouTube and saying hello to my friends over here. I have several friends over here that I keep up with over on Facebook as well. So just wanted to give a shout out to you guys, um, my Tupperware friends, and then also my, oh my gosh, I have so many different groups of friends, but my Weight Watcher buddies, and then also my Adapt friends. Um, <laughs> and I am in the middle of taking a class. It is a master class with Dr. Eric Westman uh, over in the ADAPT. It's called um, Keto, Made, uh, Keto Made Simple um, for his ADAPT class. And I just started it. And I have several of my friends from here on YouTube over there with me on Facebook. So it's just so funny how I see my friends in different spots. So I wanted to say hi. Hi, Kathy. It's good to see you. And Janine and Pat. Um, good to see you all. Thought I would come on here and just say hello and talk about a couple of things. Um, number one, thanks for sticking with me. If you're still here, I was in Florida helping my parents unpack after they got moved into their new house there. And then um, if you're new to my channel, you may not know that I'm Eastern Orthodox Christian. So we had, we're on a different calendar. <laughs> we're on the Eastern calendar. So sometimes our Easter is off from the Western Easter, and it was really off this year. We just had Easter on Sunday, but we also had Holy Week last week. So I came back from Florida, and then I went right into Holy Week and lots of church services and all of that stuff, um, and just haven't been around on social media as much. So I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about this master class that I'm taking, and also the scale. Um, I just read a excellent or an, an excellent post by Amy Berger, who is a low carb expert in the Dr. Eric Westman field of, you know, prescription strength, low carb. Okay. That's what he calls it. And I think this discussion on the scale actually is really valid for all of us that are fighting this battle against obesity, which is really what we're doing, and trying to get healthier. And she was talking a lot about the scale making us absolutely insane and how we let the scale have power over our lives and control over our mood. Um, <laughs> she was talking a little bit about... Um, Please, 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 she says, do not use your scale weight as the sole way you are assessing how things are going for you. And that has been my entire journey. I think a lot of the weekly weigh-ins and going to meetings and weighing in and being in that routine, while I think the data can be helpful, I think getting too stuck on the data can really derail us sometimes. And uh, I was thinking about when I came back from Florida. So I went to Florida. I had been doing really great on low carb prior to going to Florida. And I was feeling great, feeling great. Of course, the number never goes down as fast as I want it to. But my husband was noticing. People at church were noticing. My coworkers were noticing. Everybody was noticing like I was thinning out in the face. Um, my The fat around my middle was, you know, thinning out and I had a lot of energy and my pain was really decreased. And not only that, but my mood, um, it's so interesting. I wasn't having such big dips in my mood. Um, I could just tell that inflammation was, was lower for me and I was feeling really good. But of course the number on the scale always bugs me. And you guys know this about me because you've been around for a while. So I went to Florida and in Florida, I tried to stay low carb, tried to stay within my calories, but of course I had desserts here and there. And I got back and I was so excited <laughs> because I was only up one pound on the scale. But, but my clothes were fitting differently. I felt puffier. I started to have some rosacea because I had some desserts in Florida. Um, I had key lime pie one night. 
Um, my mom and I were doing some different cooking and stuff. You know, I had some carby stuff and I higher carb, like high carb. We're talking sugar. Okay. We're just talking sugar. And my clothes fit differently when I got back. So even though I was only up one pound on the scale, that data did not match how I felt physically. And I think maybe you guys can <laughs> empathize and sympathize with that feeling. Or when you go to the scale and you just feel great, you have more energy, your clothes are fitting better, you're wearing a smaller size, uh, you have less inflammation, you feel more clear headed, you feel really in control and you get to the scale and you have a gain or you didn't lose it all or you're, you feel like you're stuck for weeks and weeks. Um, I really need to reset my love affair with the scale. I feel like when I'm doing well, and I know a lot of these different apps and things have us weighing daily. Um, when I'm doing well, if I get a number on the scale that I don't like, it derails me. Even if it's just a mental derail, our mindset is so important and so valuable that anything that's going to mess with our mindset when we're trying to take care of ourselves really should be thrown out the window. Okay. Now I know we're not going to do that with our scales because as a society, we are in love with our scales for sure. Um, and I have been doing this dance for years. I remember I didn't really even know what I weighed for years prior to getting married. I know I weighed like 180 in high school because I went to the doctors once and they weighed me. And then I didn't really weigh again until after I got married and didn't really put any thought into that number um, until I started going to this weekly weigh-in situation. And I think that weighing in can keep us accountable but I think it can also really, really mess with what we're doing. And so it's finding that balance. So Amy Berger was talking about putting the scale away, even if it's just for a short period of time and using other measurements like measuring your body, <laughs> measuring how you feel on a monthly basis, um, I think like looking at what your clothes numbers are, what sizes are you wearing? But then sometimes that's not even accurate. In fact, I was in Lane Bryant uh, last week. I was trying to find a like a dressy top to wear to a church service because we had lots of church services. And there was one service where we were going to be doing a lot of moving around because in the Orthodox Church, we do a lot of up and down. And anyway. Um, I was going to wear dress pants and I was looking for a dressy top. And I noticed that to me, the sizes in Lane Bryant have, they don't seem like what they used to. So I consistently now fit in a 14 or a 16 in Lane Bryant. And sometimes those, those pieces are too big and I'm five, nine and I wear any, I weigh anywhere between 250 and 260 given the day of the week. Um, I remember weighing the same weight years ago and being solidly in a 20, you know? So it's like, has my body composition changed or has the sizes at Lane Bryant changed? Um, I, there's a lot of interesting things going on with sizing. So sometimes even sizing on your clothes isn't accurate enough to be able to tell. So really one of the best ways or one of the two best ways to tell um, how you're doing is number one, how do you feel? This is very interesting, too, because there's been times when I have overeaten and I feel cruddy, but the number has not budged on the scale. My clothes may be too, too tight or whatever. And I will justify continuing in that pattern, that unhealthy pattern for me, because I don't see an increase on the scale. And then you know what's happened? All of a sudden, I'll go up. So... Um, then the scale is such a fickle friend, you guys. Actually, the scale is not our friend. <laughs> I, I would say the scale is not our friend. Um, okay, so I'm getting some questions over here. I did, before I answer your questions, and I will come back to you guys. So if you have a question, 
drop it in the comments. I'm open to answering questions right now. I actually have dinner in the oven, so I have a little bit to talk uh, before I have some other things to do this evening. And I just finished work. So we don't have to chart this evening. I'm so excited. Um, so I am taking this master class because before I went to Florida, I had been doing Dr. Westman's plans for a couple of weeks. And I was really frustrated because I like to uh, I like to eat volumetrics of vegetables. And when we're looking at macronutrients, and you're looking at carb counts, if you eat a lot, a lot, a lot of vegetables, which is what I'm used to eating, it can knock you out of ketosis, which is what you're looking for in this type of low carb lifestyle. And so I was feeling frustrated with that. And I decided for me, knowledge is power. Okay. I like to know what I'm doing. And I read his books and I was like, I really want to hear this from the horse's mouth. And the cool thing about this masterclass is you actually have interactions with Dr. Westman. You can ask questions. There's a couple of classes during the week. And then you also have modules that you complete. And then there's the support system there. So it's almost like a three week boot camp. And I feel like for me, I wanted the extra, you know, oomph behind what I was doing. So I signed up for his class. Um, it's already closed for this session, but he has other sessions that will come open in the future. I'm not sponsored by him, by the way. I get no money. I have no coupons. I have no links, okay? <laughs> but if you go to Dr. Eric Westman's Adapt Your Life is what it's called uh, and sign up on his website, he has a lot of resources on there. And then he'll email you when his classes come open. And he has all kinds of different really cool classes. So anyway, I just felt like I needed that extra boost. I'm really enjoying the support and I feel like I have a better understanding uh, based on the modules of why I need to watch my carbs in all areas, why I need to watch my macros in all areas. So it's, it's being, it's helpful for me right now is what I'm trying to say. Um, <laughs> so we're going through that. I do, I think Penny is Penny and Mark. Um, Penny and Mark are in the group with me. So um, I want to say hi to Penny and Mark because we've been talking over on the on the boards. And I think a couple other guys, um, guys and gals. So say hello if you are in the adapt class with me. Okay, so I do have a couple of questions. Okay, so Gail says, hi, Gail. Good to see you. She says, trying to do page four, it's working, but I don't need to lose that much. So it's slow. Right, Gail. And I think the point of me talking to you guys this evening is that make sure you're not just looking at what the scale says. There's other data. I also want to mention that data from your healthcare provider is really important during this process. So your clothing sizes, how you feel, what your doctor says, um, I think those all should really trump. Honestly, they should trump the scale. So um, great question, great comment. Let's see, Janine says, welcome back, thank you. Rebecca says, Amy, I am actually trying to do keto, so I'm interested in listening to all your stuff. I like low carb so far. Hopefully the, this will rerun as I'm leaving for church. Rebecca, yes, I'm going to um, try to load this. Now, last, last time I loaded a live, it loaded oddly. Um, they've done some changes, it looks like, to some of the streaming. So uh, I will try to upload this when we're done. And you can drop me a comment or question, and I'll try to answer. Again, I'm not an expert. I am studying all of this. What I like about Dr. Eric Westman's approach is that it is a very, very clean way of doing uh, low carb or keto. I mean, he does things kind of the old school before we called it keto. What I really like about his class too, is that he gives you a log. <laughs> so, you know, if you wanna log your calories and things you can, but you also can just check off every day what your amounts are because he gives you a very um, specific list. If you would like the list, you can pick up his book. Um, he has a hard copy and a Kindle edition of End Your Carb Confusion. 
And in that book, at the end of the book, there is an appendix that has the exact list of what you eat on his plan. And he walks you through all of the data and how to apply this. Um, I really enjoyed the book. I'm enjoying the more interactive support of the class. And that's why I opted to, you know, tack that on to reading the book. So uh, check that out, Rebecca. Um, Gail says her clothes are fitting are feeling much better and she can feel it. I'm sorry, fitting much better. Yes, absolutely. Hi, Bessie. How are you? Um, yes, Beth, Bessie's Catholic, so she understands the up and down. Um, Lainey is asking, do you eat cheese on keto? Some people say absolutely, and some say it's not good for keto. So Lainey, I follow Dr. Westman's approach. And so for cheese on Dr. Westman, um, he says you can have a max of four ounces a day. Now on his plan, um, he says, you know, you want to eat to satiety. So you don't want to just be sitting there eating cheese. When you measure out four ounces of cheese, you are very surprised at how much cheese that is. And I know for myself, if I eat too much dairy, it does tend to kind of slow things down for me. And plus for me, dairy can be sort of a high alert. Like I can overdo it if I don't weigh out my dairy. Um, so I try to eat my cheese like in a recipe or something like that. So great question. Um, there is a debate out there about um, like pasteurized versus unpasteurized, you know, goat cheese versus like, I know my brother is a big fan of like goat cheese and stuff. He says it's easier to digest. So there's a lot of research and stuff out there about cheese. And, you know, if you're dairy sensitive, a lot of people are sensitive to these types of foods. So, you know, you kind of have to take it on an individualized approach. But as far as Dr. Westman's concerned, you can have up to four ounces of cheese a day. Um, Janine says, are you still planning on doing tops? I am doing tops, Janine. I'm actually on the online tops. I want to go in. We have a tops meeting on Tuesday mornings. It's just really hard for me with work. Uh, last week, last Tuesday was Holy Week. So I obviously was not doing that. And I had just gotten back from Florida and I had to work. Um, <laughs> and then yesterday I had a meeting at 10 o'clock, which is right when weigh-in is. So I'm not sure how I'm going to be able to adjust my Monday through Friday work schedule, but I'm going to really try. I would like to go weigh in at Tops. Um, and I'd like to have actually, more importantly, I'd like to have the person-to-person uh, -person <laughs> support and contact, which I really enjoy just being around other people. You guys know that. I'm obviously one of those people that I just enjoy being around people. Um, hi, Sparkly Susan. Just joined. Are you doing Tops Weight Watchers or I have missed you? <laughs> I think I just answered your question, Susan. Um, I have different apps on my phone. I think I told you guys I have my iTrack Bites on my phone and I have the Lose It app right now. Um, I'm doing low carb, uh, watching my calories, but really trying to focus on Dr. Westman's plan and get myself in that mind frame. Uh, it's, it's a work in progress for sure. Hi, Tracy, honey. Good to see you. She says, hi, Amy, missed you. I finally saw the scale move almost a month after reading the book. I know. Okay. So Tracy, that is something that I'm reading in the group is that, well, first of all, I'm going to post a link down below to something that I watched that was very interesting today. Um, on my lunch break, I was watching a seminar that was talking about sugar in our diets as Americans. And he, this man that was speaking was a, a doctor. He pulled up a graph that showed how prior to the 1980s, um, we did not have the obesity epidemic that we do now. And they traced the obes obesity epidemic back to the 80s where we took fat out of food and we put sugar in food instead. So because, you know, when you take the fat out of food, you take the taste and the satiety out of food. So what they replaced it was, with was sugar. And what they saw from that point on was obesity just taking off really all over the world where that was happening. OK, so he's actually from Australia and he was talking about the obesity epidemic in Australia. 
you guys know here in the U.S. we're uh, we're in trouble. Um, and so he was tracing it back to that. So I thought that was really, really interesting. Um, and I know for me, sugar, and I've talked about this for years. If you go back in my channel, I talk about my high alert foods, the foods that I just have trouble um, stopping once I start. And they're always sugar, 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 sugar. So, <laughs> and I just feel better when I'm doing a lower carb approach. Um, you know, ideally, I would love to just eat sugar all day long, but that's just not, I can't uh, be healthy and do that, you guys. Unfortunately for me, I can't eat the Reese's peanut butter cups all day long. And a lot of people say moderation. I'm one of those people, I have trouble moderating those things. So we have to work with who we are and what we've been given. <laughs> So that's what I'm trying to do. Um, Lainey says, I've been snacking on Swiss cheese and mustard lately. Um, so I hope it's keto. Ha ha. And Lainey, I would just say, watch your carbs. One thing about cheese, make sure you're reading your packaging. Um, the shredded cheeses from the store, they have potato starch in them because when you shred cheese, it likes to clump together. So they add potato starch into the cheese to keep it from clumping. So if you're going to eat cheese, you want to shred your own cheese. Um, and then some of the cheeses, just check the packaging. Sometimes they have a carb in them. So if you're eating, you know, 10 slices of cheese, what's happened to your macro count for the day? I'm currently counting total carbs. Some people choose to count net carbs. And so you guys can do some research on that um, on the Internet. Let's see. Bessie says, I'm a chocolate girl for sure. Um, the, <laughs> the earth is flat. Um, says, stay strong. Well, thank you. You stay safe out there. Uh, <laughs> that's an interesting perspective on the earth. So um, let's see. Hi, Gail. Let's see. Is she, Gail is saying when you really read the labels, it's amazing what has sugar in it. They hide it as dext dextrose. I know. I think once you start reading labels and sugar contents, um, it, it can get pretty freaky. And I know the different people that I've been listening to really talk about whole foods, um, that your foods should not have 30 ingredients in them. And I love a good protein bar. I love a great built bar. I love the protein shakes. I love all those things. But ultimately... The reality is they just don't serve me at this point. And this is a personal decision, you know. Um, I think we all, we have this authority, this ownership of our bodies, and we get to choose uh, how we're going to take care of our bodies. And for me right now, this is the route that I'm, that I'm going. Let's see. Tracy says, I still love and eat my veggies and salads. Me too, Tracy. Me too. I'm just kind of trying to watch everything. Um, and you're seeing your body shape change more than the scale move. And that's what I'm reading from a lot of my friends now that are doing the lower carb lifestyle. You're keeping it less than 50 carbs. And Tracy, let me know, are you doing uh, total carbs or net carbs? Hi, Kim. How are you? It's good to see you on here. So drop me any comments or questions down below. If you want me to try and answer something, I will. Again, I just started. This is a three-week master class that I'm doing with Dr. Westman. Um, and I really like the class because over in the Facebook group, he has everything lined out, lined out. You can download it. You can print all the notes from his modules. Um, he gives you trackers. He gives you a list to put on your refrigerator of what to eat. And then also they're there for questions. So like tonight, um, Amy Berger. And if you look her up here on YouTube, Amy Berger, B-E-R-G-E-R. -E she has YouTube videos where she goes into information on this as well. Um, she'll be in our class tonight talking and we can ask questions. So, um, okay, Tracy, great. That's awesome. Uh, so yeah. Let me know if you have any other questions. I just wanted to check in. I'm going to try to do a what I eat in the day for you guys. So you can kind of see, you know, and I'm sure give me your feedback because you guys always do. You're good about that. <laughs> uh, but I will see you over on Facebook. Again, my name over on Facebook, I actually changed it. It's Amy. N is for nurse. R-N. I added the Amy <laughs> in there. 
because I noticed when I'm like talking to people and they say they they see N is for nurse, they don't know what that says, if that makes sense. They think that's like one word. So I put the Amy over there. So it's Amy, N is for nurse, RN. Come friend me over there. I'm over there on Facebook. I'm in several different groups, like really fun support groups. I have a Tupperware group over there. Lots of friends over there. I really appreciate you guys' friendship. And I will tell you that I really appreciate that all my friends are really like positive, positive, awesome people. Um, I just feel, feel like you guys have really supported me through some stuff. So I really appreciate it. And I will see you guys later. Have a good night. Stay in orbit. I'm going to go eat my chicken. Uh, I'm baking chicken. I'm making a chicken cordon bleu. <laughs> so I took chicken. I have one piece of cheese, 0.7 ounce of cheese in there. Um, I have some Swiss cheese and then I have some Canadian bacon and then I used um, pork rind breadcrumbs that I found on Amazon and I did a coating of those on my chicken breast. So I'm having that and then I'm having keto ginger. If you look her up, keto ginger, it's J-I-N-J-A. She has a coleslaw recipe that is low carb. And is delicious. So I'm having a cup of that on the side. Um, and that's that. All right. <laughs> There's dinner for you. And oh, I chopped my hair off too. That was my other little bit of news. My, my hair was like really getting long and I chopped it. So whatever. I'll see you guys later. Bye. Take care.